At the lowest level, the way that uh, our programs are going to communicate to the processor and force it to do things that make sense with sharing, uh, there's an instruction called comp exchange. Uh, and if we put a lock prefix on it, then it does a comparison and exchange atomically, which means across all CPUs that are sharing the same memory, uh, relevant if dest is a memory, memory address. So the way compare uh, and exchange works is um, there's an implicit argument not here, which is RAX. RAX is always involved with this. So there's three arguments, really. There's a value in RAX. The processor is going to look inside of dest and if dest has the same value as RAX, then it's going to move source into dest. But if dest has a different value than RAX, then it's not going to move source into dest. Uh, so what's what this is used for is making sure that a variable that you want to update still has the old value that you're updating it from. Right. And uh, again, if dest, it, when it's a memory address, then caches are forced to agree about uh, the content of that uh, across all CPUs. This operation is more generically known as a compare and swap operation. It's a compare and swap because it atomically combines the comparison of what's at dest with some value and then swaps in a different value if that comparison succeeds. And there's no standard C level way of getting at this operation, but in GCC there is a, it's called a compiler intrinsic, that is something with a long name, in this case uh, prefixed with double underscores, that maps almost directly to this machine code. So we give it an address, the old value that we want to be there. Um, as we, as we uh, change it, the new value that we want to change it to, and the result is true if the change actually happens. So let's uh, take our problem with the echo server and simplify it down to this program. And here I've used volatile in an attempt to defeat anything the compiler might do, but uh, the punchline is going to be that this program is still broken. Right? We are going to ask to do 30,000 iterations of incrementing the counter and then see whether two threads doing that, whether we get the answer that we expect or not. X. Okay, let's call this count.c and compile it and run it. So what we see when we run count is we don't see 60,000. We see, at least we don't usually see 60,000. We see various numbers getting close to 60,000. And again, that's because um, we have two threads and they're racing on updating the counter right here. So we should not expect to know what this program does other than, uh, other than probably not what we wanted. So the, the solution, we're going to use the, the low-level solution here, which is to um, use a compare and swap on counter. And that'll look like this. So we're just going to change the body of the while loop, the for loop here, to go into its own nested loop. So the idea is that we get the current value that's in the counter variable, and then we, s we uh, pass compare and swap the address of the counter variable, the value that we think it currently has, and the value that we want it to be, which is one more than the old value. So if the processor can atomically swap this old value for this new value, um, then it'll return true and we'll exit the loop. Otherwise, we'll see what the counter is now and, and retry this operation. So each of the threads 30,000 times is going to try to update, and it's going to retry an update if, if it fails, if some other processor has changed counter meanwhile, and so we shouldn't lose counts like we did before. So let's try that. And now when we run it, even with multiple CPUs in the virtual machine, we're always going to get 60,000.